all the ways you can seal those gaps and keep out air, water, dust, bugs, and everything that you want to keep out of your shop. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Patriot DIY channel. We recently had this metal shop built behind our house and these can be really great. They're usually a lot more affordable than a stick built shop and they have the benefit of coming in kits that can usually be put up in a day or two as long as you have a nice level surface. But one of the downsides can be that where your siding meets in the seams, there can be gaps that need to be filled. We want to seal out the air so that it can be easily heated or cooled. Uh, we also want to keep out dust and bugs and things like that. So it's important that we try to get all those gaps filled the best we can. Now we're going to step inside here. We're going to talk about some of the major trouble spots that you need to address. But before we do that, guys, if you haven't, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell and stop right now and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Now let's get in here and take a look at some of these gaps we're talking about. Now, all right, guys, now one of the most obvious trouble spots is going to be in your corners. Because of the way this siding is shaped, it creates gaps here right along your studs. And you guys can probably see the light coming in through those gaps. So if light can get in, that means air, dust, bugs, anything could get in through there. Now, the best way to seal up something like that is going to be this great stuff. It's some expanding foam. This stuff does a great job of filling those gaps, and it doesn't take much to fill a small gap like this. This stuff expands really big, so you don't want to use too much. And once it gets on something, it does not come off. So I recommend wearing gloves because you will spend days trying to scrape this stuff off of your hands. But all you're going to do is uh, take that nozzle and stick it in here in your gap and give it a little squirt. Now, like I said, it doesn't take much. One quick pull of the trigger does a good job of filling that gap up. Keep in mind this stuff is going to expand to at least two times its size, so you don't want to put too much in there because you'll end up with a big glob coming out. Now let me give you guys a closer look at how I'm doing this. So really I'm just putting it in there, giving it one good squirt, and then I'm moving that nozzle up and down to really fill that area. Like I said, it really doesn't take much. And once that expands, that's gonna be more than enough to fill that gap and close off any air that could get through. Now I just wanna give you guys a couple examples of some spots that I've already done. Now this was the first spot I did and you can see that once that stuff expands, it really expands out of that hole. The good thing is that once it dries, if you did put a little bit too much, it's pretty easy to go back in there and just cut that excess off and leave you a nice flat surface. But uh, we are insulating this building as well, so once that insulation gets up here, it's gonna cover up most of that anyway. Now that great stuff can be used for a lot of different areas. You can see up here above me where the ceiling is, there are a lot of areas up there that need to be filled, and we're just gonna use that exact same method to fill those. The other problem area you have to worry about is right here along the floor at the bottom of your frame. Now with inconsistencies in the concrete and things like that, you could easily get air passing through there. But also another thing we're worried about is water. So we're gonna be coming in here with some silicone and putting a bead of silicone all the way across at the bottom. The other area we're gonna want a silicone is right here along the top of that frame. The problem here is though that the siding is not screwed to this bottom support in the middle. It is at the studs, but not here in the middle. So there's a larger gap here. Uh, so before we put down any silicone, we're gonna go around to the outside and we're just gonna put a self-tapping screw in right here in the middle to close in that gap. Then we'll come back inside and we'll silicone everything up. All right, guys, we're outside and you can see that they do have it screwed in there at the studs, but nothing in the middle. And uh, just to help close in that gap, I'm gonna put a screw in. And for that, we're just gonna be using these self-tapping sheet metal screws. All right, there we go. Now that should help close up that gap on the inside. And now we're ready to go back and do some silicone. All right, guys, we're just gonna be using this quad OSI. 
uh, sealant. This is a clear silicone sealant. And I will be putting a link to all these things in the description below if you wanna get them for yourself. All right, guys, now we're just gonna be putting a bead all the way across the bottom where it meets the concrete and then also right here where the siding meets. You wanna make sure you go ahead and clean your area the best you can before you start doing this. All right, guys, the next trouble spot we're gonna talk about is the door. Most metal buildings are gonna come with something like this. This is a roll-up door. And because of the way this door is designed, it can be really difficult to seal because of that corrugated metal. And the way we're gonna do that is with these garage door brush seals. So these brushes will fill in the gaps in that corrugated metal and help seal out any air and dust and things like that that I could try to get in. Now with the sides of the doors, you can see that there is some play there and there is quite a big gap there that's really difficult to seal with traditional weather stripping or door seals and things like that. So the way this brush works, it mounts on your siding here and those brushes fill the gaps in that corrugated metal. Now there are different sizes of brush that you can get depending on how big your gap is. I'm planning to use a two inch brush for the sides and a three inch brush for the top. Now let me show you what the top looks like. Now you can see up here at the top, there is quite a big gap up there and that's just the nature of the door. Uh, it wasn't installed incorrectly or anything like that. It's just the nature of this type of roll up door. So we're gonna use the same type of brush seal up there. We're just gonna use a three inch brush to really fill that gap and that should get the job done. The way these brushes work, they have enough give so that as you roll the door up and down, it still allows you to roll that door up and down easily while always filling those gaps. All right, guys, now I hope that video helped you out. If you have a metal building like this, now you know all the ways you can seal those gaps and keep out air, water, dust, bugs, and everything that you want to keep out of your shop. Remember guys, I am gonna put a link to all these products in the description below, so make sure you check those out. And if you like these kind of videos, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. We have a lot of big projects coming up with this shop. We're gonna insulate, we're gonna face some of the walls with barn wood, we're gonna be building workbenches. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely subscribe and stick around for those videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.